Well, I want to join the rest of the team in saying happy Mother's Day to you. All of you ladies who are here, you make a bigger impact than you realize. And I'm going to state the case that you have some very unique superpowers that enable you to do what you do that blow my mind. We're going to talk about one specific one in a little bit. But, you know, there's, there's quite a few we could talk about, such as your ability to multitask. I feel like such a wimp when I can halfway do something, one thing at a time, and yet I remember vividly one time watching my wife do some things in the kitchen, and she had the kids on her while making food, while talking to someone on the phone, and I'm pretty sure she was doing something else, and she was getting it done well, and I'm like, I don't know how you do that. That's a unique superpower. Also, uh, if there's kids in the room, you need to know this. Moms were given by God the ability to have supersonic hearing. <laughs> if you do not want them to know what you were saying, get at least two miles away. At least two miles away. Also, I would call this the power of the look. No words necessary, just a look, and you know what to do. Usually, the thing you need to do is shut up. <laughs> Uh, the ability to already know the wrong thing you did before you get home. I don't know how that works. I don't know if it's a sixth sense or if my mom had a cabal of spies that were always around me. But before I would even get home, she would knew the wrong thing I did. Also, I believe most moms should be lead homicide detectives because in addition to the ability to know the wrong thing you did before you could even get to her, the ability to get you to admit the wrong thing you did, even if she don't know it. That's amazing. Now, my favorite superpower, and this is my, my mom's number one superpower. She's got a lot. But the one that I think of as I was preparing for today and making this list, I'm like, oh, I remember how good my mom was at this. She had the ability to make me laugh when I wanted to stay so mad. I wanted to stay mad so badly, and she would not let me. She had a way of getting me to laugh, and if you were to meet my mom, and I wish all of you could, she is a four foot 11, 100 pound ball of energy, love, and enthusiasm. And so she was the one that brought joy and silliness to our home, and I love that. And that definitely influenced me, and I've been known to be a little silly as well. But I remember I would want to be so mad, maybe even at her. Uh, I know that my par- the maddest I would ever get is when my parents would try to get me to do a chore. And the, the, the story behind that that I've come to realize is I don't like to be interrupted doing the thing I'm doing. I'm already doing this thing. I don't want to have to stop the thing and do the other thing. It turns out I'm always doing something. So that's not a good situation for me. There's always going to be something else to do. And as a kid, your parents are going to tell you to do something. And my mom used to call me Wendy because when she would say, you need to stop and you need to go do this chore, I'd go, and then go do it. She was, okay, Wendy, go do your chore, Wendy. And I hated when she said that. Uh, But I remember, I don't know what the circumstances were, but I vividly remember being just her and I in our living room, and I'm pouting, and I'm mad, and she's being silly, and she's being funny, and she's being awesome, and I go from being like, the next thing you know, I'm up smiling and hanging out and being silly with her. That's a wonderful superpower that my mom had. But here's the one that stands out, that I believe is so true And we're going to see what I believe is an example of it in Scripture. A mom's superpower is the ability to love fiercely and persistently the way God does. Fiercely. Persistently. Don't miss those two words. And that kind of love tills the soil of a heart so that it can receive seeds of faith. Now, I want to give a disclaimer, and Missy did such a great job. We, we try to always remember, you know, on Mother's Day, it, it, it's a holiday. There's lots to celebrate. I saw so many men out buying flowers yesterday and gift cards and all that. It's, but it can be a hard day and a sad day for people. And you might be already trying to check out on me saying, well, 
I don't think I had a mom in my life like that. And that may be very well true. But I want to tell you this. I did have a mom in my life like that, but I also had multiple moms in my life like that. And maybe you can even think of one of those in your life. But I do believe. I would say this to a a mother who is diehard atheist. I would say to them with great confidence, God made you to love like nobody else. The way you love, it's different. It's just different. Did y'all know that? You may know this here in this service especially. With so many people in the room, you probably don't have any problem believing this. But the statistics in churches in America show very clearly that Mother's Day on Sundays in churches are second in attendance only to Easter. Mother's Day is the second most attended Sunday in churches in America. And I believe this. Moms have a way of getting the devil himself to come to church. They give you that look and say, all I want for Mother's Day is for you to go to church with me. Yes, Mom, I will be there, right? And many times in my very young years, the reason I was inside a church building was because of my mom. And that's okay. Bless you, by the way. Uh, That is okay. But as we think about moms, I hope that you can think about in this moment, on this day, if you're a mom, I want you to know this, that you do these things. Moms are the ones that hold you when you're sick. They're the ones that comfort you in a way that only they can when you're sad, when you're scared. They buy you that ice cream after that game. They make you laugh when you're mad. They did that cool thing for you and with a little grin and a small little whisper say, we don't need to tell dad about this. That happened in my life too. She is absolutely the one that will go to the 24-hour Walmart on a weeknight to get poster board duct tape and cement glue for that project you just remembered at 10 p.m. I've seen my wife do that so many times. Moms love fiercely. They love persistently. And that's why I believe that God wired them in unique ways to pass along faith to others around them. When I think about that superpower, I think of a short little passage in the New Testament that I want to read to you. It's from the book of 2 Timothy in the New Testament. I want to read to you chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. The apostle Paul wrote this. He wrote this to one of his protégés named Timothy. Timothy is a pastor in the city of Ephesus. And here's what he says to him. Paul says to Timothy, I remember your genuine faith. For you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. This is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Paul says to Timothy, I see faith in you. And that faith that I see in you looks so familiar. I saw it before you. I saw it in your mom. I saw it in your mama. And now because of your faith, God has uniquely gifted you to pastor and shepherd his church in this Greco-Roman colony of Ephesus. And when I recognized that in you, I laid my hands upon you and prayed over you. And you were set apart for the work of ministry. And the Holy Spirit is at work in you. And I'm telling you, Timothy, keep fanning the flames. Don't let them die. Keep them going. The flame of faith that began and was sparked by a loving mom and a loving mamma. I love this. Now, I have to admit to you, it's funny how you can read a passage you've read over and over, and then all of a sudden you, you see something new you never saw before. What I saw this time 
wasn't something new, but something missing. And I never thought of it before. It's not too uncommon for preachers to preach from this passage on Mother's Day. Eunice and Lois and Timothy, yeah. But for the first time in getting ready for today, I noticed something missing. Men. Now don't, don't be like, here he goes again. Those preachers love to say, Mother's Day, mothers are awesome. We love you. Men, step up. You know, I don't want to be that way today. I don't want to be that way today. In fact, on Father's Day, we can talk about a man's very unique influence of faith that is very different than the moms. We're talking about moms today. <laughs> and I did wonder, like, where are the men in this list? And we don't know for sure. Scholars have researched it, and they are confident that one great explanation for the reason no man is mentioned is that Timothy's dad was a non-Jewish man who was most likely embedded in a Greco-Roman religion, one of the pantheons of gods and goddesses, maybe even, maybe even the imperial cult, where you believe that the Roman emperor is divine, is God himself. It would make so much sense that that is the case because probably the moment that his dad's wife his mom placed her faith in Jesus. The most loving thing that his dad could have done was to just walk away. I don't know. It sounds weird to say it that way because a lot of people died for being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the first century. And when that happened with, with Eunice, Timothy's mom, he was out of the picture, at least spiritually. I just wonder about that when I look at this passage. The men in Timothy's life are not mentioned. But make no mistake, the mom, the grandma had a powerful influence. They were from a place called Lystra. And if you go back to the book of Acts in the New Testament, Paul had a missionary journey in Lystra. And what's cool about the story in Acts chapter 14 of his time in Lystra is two very unusual things happened while he was there. One was that God used him to heal a crippled man. That definitely rose people's curiosities in that town. Most likely, Lois the grandma and Eunice the mom were already of faith. We don't know that for sure, but most likely they were. And they were probably there to see that. But another terrible thing happened. The people in Lystra, the Jewish people, almost killed Paul. Paul barely escaped death. He was almost stoned to death for his faith. And yet, after that, we find ourselves seeing Lois the grandma, Eunice the mom, and now Timothy, all embracing faith in Christ. Perhaps all attending church together in the city of Ephesus. And Timothy is the pastor. And Paul is saying, I see the genuine faith from generation to generation to generation. That stayed strong even in the midst of difficulties. That's a beautiful thing. When I think about the difficulties they probably faced in the first century, just to carry the name of Jesus... It reminds me of this takeaway that goes along with what we said earlier about the mom's persistent and fierce love. But because of that, there's a couple of takeaways. And these applies to everybody, not just mom. Everybody in this room, this applies to you. Never underestimate the power of just being who you are in Christ. That's it. Just be who you are in Christ. If you want to make a difference in your family, in your neighborhood, in your school, in your workplace, wherever it is you live, wherever it is you work, wherever it is you play. If you want to make a difference, it's not that complicated. Just be who you are in Christ. Just be that. And I believe that's exactly what Mama Lois did and Mama Eunice did. Just beginning in this faith in the first century, Figuring things out in a world in which you could suffer persecution for even carrying the name of Jesus. They just were who they were in Christ. One of the most powerful things that you can do in this life. 
I have to remind myself of this as a parent. And so I say this especially to the parents, but really to everybody. We don't have to try to play the role of the Holy Spirit. I wish, I wish every human being came with an instrument panel that opened up in their heart and you could go in and just tweak it. We would mess it up though, wouldn't we? We would totally mess that up. But I, I, I want to be able to do that. If there's someone in your life that you wish you could just have a greater influence on, and maybe it is you as a mom saying that about a child or someone that is so far from God, but you love them and you care for them. I want you to know the Holy Spirit is going to do the Holy Spirit things. You just need to be who you are in Christ. And I wish someone would have told me that a few decades ago. And here's what will happen when you do that. People around you are going to catch you, catch you following Jesus through the good, the bad, and the ugly. When you're following Jesus, the people around you in your life are going to catch that. It's just going to show up. They're going to happen to notice a Bible laying around. They're going to happen to notice you praying. Have you ever had, have you ever been like praying, like maybe on your knees? Sometimes you just got to pray on your knees. I don't know if you know what I'm saying when you, you have that moment. I've had people accidentally walk in on me and it like frightens me when that happens. I, I feel so vulnerable in that moment. I don't want anyone to see that. And yet, if you're following Jesus and that causes you to at times be in prayer on your knees or on your face, that will get caught. And that is the most powerful thing that will ever happen in that person's life. Is it just catch you following Jesus? You may say, well, man, I'm just, I am not that spiritual. Man, I'm so far from perfect. For people to catch you imperfectly following Jesus is one of the most powerful things that they can experience. When you can say, man, I messed that up. I'm going to try to get it right next time. I know I should have done that. That was the wrong thing. Do you realize how powerful it is, especially for a kid, to see a mom or a dad be that humble? For them to one day look back and say, my mom and dad wasn't perfect. They just tried their best to follow Jesus. And that impacted me so much, so much. Just be who you are in Christ, and, and people will catch you. Again, this applies to everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. If you just be who you are in Christ, you are going to absolutely make a difference in the people around you. Probably the best example I personally can think of about that in my own life is someone I've probably talked about a lot with you, my mamma, Carrie Boggs. I mentioned the good, the bad, the ugly, I never will forget the day I found out that my mamma had throat cancer. I was a teenager still, and I, hearing the C word, just to me, it meant, well, we're going to lose her. Now, the good news, spoiler, is that the Lord brought healing in her life, and she lived a good long time after this. But it was a tough journey for throat cancer where it was located. They had to surgically remove her larynx, part of her larynx, part of her tongue, Part of her throat back there, it was terrible. Had to basically move to Vanderbilt University in Nashville to get radiation and other treatments and recover from her surgery. Learn to swallow again, learn to eat again, learn to talk again. And what we saw Mamma do, still love Jesus. Still love people. And there's a part of you that wanted to say, Lord, this is the most saintly, precious woman we know, the one, the one person in our family that we know believes in you. Why would you let this happen? Why would you let her, of all people, go through this? That's normal. That's natural to ask that. But now years later, I won't blame that on God, but he sure used it. Probably the most impactful thing in my life and in my dad's life was to see that woman hang on to her faith no matter what. 
no matter what she was going through, she never faltered believing in him. I'm sure she cried out to him. I'm sure it was not always easy, but she kept believing in Jesus. She kept loving him, and she kept loving the people around her. Man, those doctors and nurses in Nashville loved my mamaw because she never went to a visit without homemade Harlan County peanut butter and chocolate fudge. And listen, you're like, oh, that's sweet. No, 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 no. You did not have her fudge. It is next level. We got her to give us the chocolate fudge recipe. That was all I would ask for for any occasion. Birthday, Christmas, I just want your fudge. It is mind-boggling how good it is. We got the recipe. We still can't make it. We don't, we've tried. I don't know if she left out a step. She kept saying that the humidity matters and you got to do all this. I, everything's got to be by hand, she says. And I'm like, we can't do it. She was that good at it. And they loved her. She loved people and loved Jesus no matter what. Through the good, through the bad, through the ugly. And I want to stand before you and tell you, just by her being who she was in Christ, generations have been transformed. Generations. And I want you to know this. You can do the same thing. And already you're like, nah, not me. Stop it. Don't let the enemy feed you that lie. You not only can do the same thing, you are doing it. Just be who you are in Christ. Let me restate what we said at the beginning. A mom's superpower is the ability to love fiercely and persistently the way God does. And that that love tills the soil of a heart so that it can receive seeds of faith. My mama had tilled the soil for years and years. My dad watches this. I have to ask him if I'm telling our family stories correct. He's had to correct me on a few things. I, I don't know if he would agree with this or not, but I would go so far as to say, my dad, the ground wasn't just hard. It was probably paved. And my mamaw's years and decades of praying and loving and being who she was in Christ was the jackhammer that God used to bring him the faith in Jesus. Man, just be who you are in Christ. So we always talk about next steps when we get together. Like, what can we take home? I'm going to give you one thing to do. Again, this is for everybody. Moms, dads, kids, siblings, single people, whoever you are, whatever you are doing in life right now, whatever stage of life you're in, whatever your circumstances are, remember these two words, just love. If you don't know what else to do, and there's going to come times in your life where you're throwing your hands up like, I don't know what to do. What do I do? This person I care about, they're going through some stuff. I can't fix it. I don't know what to do. Just love. Someone just loved you and just loved me, even though we were where we were doing what we were doing, and it is powerful. You don't know how tempting it is to make that sentence longer and put about 20 sub points under it. I was like, oh, I want to put that down. I want to preach that. But I felt the Lord saying, Bill, you're going to complicate that. Just love. And if you think that's too simple, let me remind you, one of the first memory verses I learned in the Bible are these three words. God is Love. When you love, you are never more like God. When you love, you are revealing a glimpse of the creator of the universe to the one whom you are loving. So yeah, as simple as those two words, if you do them, you will transform lives around you. You may not get to always see the full results of that, but one day you will will have all of eternity to celebrate the full stories and the backstories of all the love that was given and shown through the good, the bad, and the ugly that resulted in faith, that resulted in changed hearts and changed 
lives. Just love. Love the one in front of you and leave the rest to the Holy Spirit of God. That love will jackhammer the pavement, will till the soil, will plant the seeds, and it will get watered, often by storms of life that come. But then the day will come in God's time when something will burst forth from that soil, something beautiful, something growing, something real, and something alive. In fact, we've been sort of teasing this a little bit all morning. You might be here for the same reason I first started going to church. Because mama said. (laughs) And if that's you, and you're being honest this morning, and would say, I don't have faith. I would add the word yet. I don't have faith. I wonder if even now in this moment, that this was God's appointment for you, that he knew you would be here or be watching and listening online on this day, Mother's Day 2023, and there's been so much soil tilled in your heart, there have been so many seeds planted, and you feel like something different's happening this time. Something's breaking through the top. Something is bursting forth. What is it? What is that? That's the Holy Spirit saying, it's time. It's time. I remember people asking me, hey, you went to summer camp seven summers, and finally the seventh summer you gave your life to Jesus. What was different? I don't know. But it was just different. Something clicked. Something was brewing inside of this heart, and I can't explain it. I could not have conjured it up myself No one could have fabricated. No one could have programmed it. No one could have manipulated it. It was just there. Friends, that's when the Holy Spirit is saying, it's time. The seeds were planted long ago. I've been watering it all along. And now, the choice is up to you. Will you say yes to me? Can I give you one more verse before we close? My favorite promise in all the Bible Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Can I, can I give you one more little tip, a little bit of Mother's Day humor? I, I remember being in my house when my kids were younger, toddler, maybe early elementary, and I believed they had this bat signal mentality about mom. It didn't matter where they were, what was going on, No matter, they wouldn't even know if mom was even in the house. But when anything happened and they needed anything, it was, Mom! Mom! I think one time in my house, I heard both of them in different rooms calling out to mom. I don't even know where mom is. And I'm like, y'all okay? What is going on? And it was just a simple little thing. Like, you're going to call mom up from all the way downstairs to come up here to just look at you, do a somersault on your bed? Okay, that's cool. But this was the thing. It was always mom, 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 mom. And why do kids do that? Because it works. I got to do. All I got to do is say her name and she'll show up. And if earthly, imperfect moms have that influence and have that power, let me just tell you about Jesus. All you have to do is call upon his name, and he will change your life. If you don't have faith and you're here today, start with a little prayer of faith. It doesn't matter what words you use. Just call upon his name. Ask him to save you, and he absolutely will. And so, right here, right now, let's give you that opportunity as we pray. Will you bow your heads with me? Father, I thank you that through your son, Jesus, the way was made for us to spend eternity with you in heaven because of your cross and the empty grave. We can be alive with you forever. You walking with us through all the rest of our days here and on through eternity. And you have given us this promise 
that whoever and that anyone and everyone who calls upon your name will be given this free gift of salvation. So Father, in this moment right now, there are people finally allowing the plant to burst forth out of the soil of their heart for faith to take root. Calling upon your name to say, Jesus, save me. Forgive me of all my sins. Adopt me into your family right now. I believe. I believe. Oh, Lord, for anyone here in this room or online who has called upon your name just now, help them to know that they are now yours forever. And your word says that nothing can ever pluck them from your hands. They are safe in your arms from now on and through eternity. Father, thank you for saving us. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.